What's up guys, it's Robin and welcome back to my channel. So for all my subscribers who have been following along, today we're going to be making part two of my Nightmare Before Christmas cake trilogy. Now if you're new here and you haven't seen part one yet, you can find a link to that in the eye up above. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to catch part three when it airs. So for today's cake, we're going to be making another cake of the Pumpkin King himself, except this time he's going to be in pumpkin form. And to make this cake super extra, we're going to be making it a light up cake with a surprise inside. This is going to be so much fun, so stay tuned. Now let's get into it. So to get started, we're going to have to level out these layers. So as you can see, I'm using three chocolate cake rounds, one of which I baked up in a regular 8 inch cake pan, but the other two I baked up in an oven safe stainless steel bowl to give a bit of a dome shape. So that should save us a little bit of carving. So I'm going to grab my cake leveler. We're going to trim these down. And once I'm finished leveling everything out, we're going to cut out our centers to make way for our surprise inside. So once you've finished leveling and cutting the centers out of each of your layers, we're going to go ahead and stack and fill them. Now when you're cleaning up your cake scraps, you can go ahead and toss them or save them, whichever you prefer, or you can eat them, that's fine too. But be sure to save one of the centers that you cut out because we're going to use that as a cork after we put our surprise inside. So I'm just going to start out by adding a little bit of icing on our cake board to secure our cake with, and then we're going to continue to stack and fill our layers. All right, so we have a rough pumpkin shape now. I do still have a little bit of carving to do, but I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to chill to solidify these icing layers a little bit because I do prefer to carve a cold cake. It is much less messy and you have a nice clean cut every time. But before I do all that, we're gonna fill our surprise center and it's gonna be with a favorite Halloween treat of mine, Reese's Pieces Candy. So I've chilled my cake for about 30 minutes, so it should be nice and firm now and great for carving. So I'm just going to take a serrated knife and we're going to start by carving a little indentation in the top of our cake where the stem is going to go. Then we're going to round off our sides a little bit and then I'm going to carve little grooves all down the sides all the way around the cake. All right, so I finished carving the shape of my pumpkin and I think that looks great so far. So now it's time for our crumb coat. So I'm just gonna be using a small offset spatula and a flexible plastic smoother to apply a thin layer of vanilla American buttercream, which I've colored with a tiny little bit of Americolor orange.
All right, I finished my crumb coat and I'm really happy with how that looks, but I need my icing to firm up a little bit. So I'm gonna pop it in the fridge to chill for about 15 or 20 minutes. And in the meanwhile, we're gonna roll out a nice big piece of orange fondant to get our cake covered up with. So my crumb coat is set and it is firmed up nicely. I'm actually able to touch it and there's nothing on my finger. That's how you know it's ready. So I'm gonna take my large rolling pin and we're just gonna roll our fondant onto our pin to make it a little bit easier to transfer helps keep it from tearing. I'm just gonna lift this up and drape it over our cake and we're gonna just smooth it out using our hands. All right, so our pumpkin is actually starting to look like a pumpkin now, but I wanna make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna use some of my fondant tools to create some scores and lines and blemishes on the surface of the cake. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of edible brown dust and a clean paintbrush to give it a little bit more texture. Alrighty, I think that looks super cool, but we still have to give the pumpkin cake a face. So I've drawn up a stencil here, as you can see, and we're just gonna attach this to the side of our cake and mark it off where we want it to go. Then we're gonna take a serrated knife and we're actually gonna carve the pattern out of the cake. All right, so I finished with my carving and I think that looks so freaking awesome. It almost looks like a real jack-o'-lantern. Now, if you're gonna make this cake ahead of time, I would recommend taking the extra step and putting some icing inside the mouth, the nose, and the eyes to keep your cake from drying out. But my cake's not gonna last very long, so I'm gonna skip that step and I really like the way this looks, so I'm not gonna touch it. So that means we're almost done. We just have two things left to do. First, I'm gonna make a little nub for the top of our pumpkin. And as I said in the beginning of the video, this is also gonna be a light up cake. So I have some little lights here too. Now I found these on Amazon and they're really, really cute. They're just some little balloon lights and you just give them a little twist to turn them on. And I've also wrapped them in a little bit of floral tape so we can stick them in our cake and this should be food safe.
And ta-da! Here he is, guys, and I absolutely love him. All hail the Pumpkin King. Well, I really hope you like him, and I really hope you enjoyed the video, too. If you did, you guys know what to do. Leave me a big thumbs up and lots of love in the comment section, too. And if you haven't done so already and you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video, because you do not want to miss part three of our Nightmare Before Christmas cake trilogy. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.